What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Today, I sit down with Douglas. He is a new business owner coming in to the space, actually partnered with somebody. Love this story. Great guys. Awesome interaction between two partners wanting to grow and expand and utilize their individual skill sets to create something awesome in the industry. So awesome business breakthrough with Douglas and his partner. Uh, check this one out. And if you are thinking about partnering uh, or pivoting, uh, this is going to be an awesome business breakthrough for you. Contractors all over the world are wanting more, more time, more freedom, more impact. The way we do this is through implementing systems, processes, standards. Welcome to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Here we hit business strategy, coaching, mindset, motivation, the tools you need for success. So strap in, listen up, and get ready to grow on the Contractor Secrets Podcast. What's up, everyone? I'm here. Uh, I'm here with Douglas. Uh, man, just quit your job. Uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on, man. Congrats on the uh, on the move. What was that job? Also, make sure you tell me that. Yeah. So I when I I moved to Florida recently, um, wasn't happy with what I was doing. I'm from New Jersey. Me too. And you are. I'm from. Yeah, uh, I'm from Asbury Park. Ocean okay. Country. I'm South Jersey near uh, Camden County. Sure. Yep. So. Yeah, so I made the move down here. I used to come down here on trips all the time to visit my grandmother. I loved it down here. Sure. I'm in the Delray, West Palm area, so just south of where you're at. Okay, cool. And um, the, my landlord um, was looking to paint his condo he just bought. It was a three-story vertical living, pretty cool. Okay. And he was getting painting estimates. And I said, I said, shit, Larry, I'll do it for you. Yeah. And um, I got the estimates. I shot low and just um painted his whole place he wanted it done in five days it took me 13 <laughs> but in the meantime i landed a few jobs in that complex it was a beautiful complex on it uh on the intercoastal and pe people in the complex are nosy they come around see what you're sure. doing and sure enough i did a few just quotes on my own i was like i was liking it man i was like this, yes. this is great i mean making make good awesome. margins and everything else and my painting history, my my background is enterprise rental car. I out of college, I worked yep. for them for years and years. Started as a trainee, worked my way all the way yep. up in you know to upper management. So that's my background, and the the business model that enterprise rental car has is, is second to none, in my opinion. Um, I never thought coming out of college, I'd be I'd be renting cars. You know, right. <laughs> renting cars. How stupid is that? But their culture, um, their, and I hear this phrase a lot on your podcast, but um, they're a sales and marketing company, customer service that happens yep. to cars. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm doing the same thing here with yep. my painting idea sure. and that I've got from you and I attributed to you, you know? So wow. um, that's cool, man. <laughs> it's freaking, you know, I mean, the other day, the first thing when I, when we quit our job, and I'll tell you a little bit about that, but when I quit, job what do you think the first thing i did was sign up for drip jobs Amazing. second yeah i did my quote the next day my first quote so i, I was you know I, you know i'm selling to the people i know contractors yeah. I know. so right. yeah I, I love it so i just wanted to just thank you man yeah so yeah i started to get jobs and um it, it dried up for me um so i was like i want to keep painting and I want to learn how. So I, I, while I was doing these jobs, I applied for, I found the best company with the best website painting company I could find. Okay. I applied on their website, went through a phone interview, a face-to-face, -face. the guy, the owner wanted to come out and check my job and uh, you know, that I was currently working on. Yeah. The one 13 day jobs. It was during that time that I was applying for jobs. So, um, he came out, looked at it and said, uh, you know, you're kind of like a handyman type guy, but you're doing a pretty good job. I was like insulted, but I was like, also, so I kind of, he was quick about it and then left and I kind of walked him out the door down to his car and was keep, kept asking him questions and everything else. Cause I, I was thinking maybe this is something I want to do, you know, own right. my own company. So he ended up calling me the next day. I got hired there. So after, you know, at the couple jobs I had, I, I went to work for him for the last five months. Wow. And commitment yes so i learned i became a pretty good painter man so i'm you know i'm not a pro but i'm good so let I'm me ask you this why'd you quit with him why, what made you quit 
So I met this guy during this process and he's okay. my partner, his name's Tom. He's a, he is an expert. He's a, te- a technician, man. And younger than I, um, motivated, owns his own company. It's called Wicked Painting. And um, he does a good job with it. A lot off word of mouth and referrals, no marketing or anything like that. Has, you know, lawn signs, business cards, shirts, that type of thing. So I met him one day. It was kind of funny. He uh, had paint all over him and I met him and I, I said, you know, I looked like you did an hour ago because I, you know, I was a painter. I, 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 was, I was like, what do you do? He's like, yeah, well, I own my own company. So we talked about that. I invited him out to dinner. Um, it just picked his brain about everything. Never talked about going into business together or anything like that. Just wanted information. And we kept in touch. Uh, his business kind of dried up a little bit. And he started working for another company um, doing handyman stuff. And it was getting, you know, going to, out to, quote, jobs that um, were bigger than that company handles. So we were talking right. about it. And we built up enough of them. And then his phone started to ring as well. For his, old, for his other company. And sure enough, uh, we had enough business, um, you know, to, to jump ship. I, I just, the end of the story is I was on a roof and he had was on two different estimates that day. I'm on a roof painting for this company and sweating, risking my life, Tanner. And, um, you know, he called me and, and we went over the quote together and he spent did the 95.5 that you do. Yep. And yep. Sure, enough, sure enough, you know, he landed both jobs with huge nice. margin, three. So okay. and we, we kind of have business enough business to last us yeah. through till the mid mid July. But yeah. I don't. So the reason for this call is I don't want to be standing there in mid July and not have my phone ringing. Yeah, you have and plenty of time. But of here's, I mean, I see through all that, and I think you're you're in the uh, infatuation stage. You're seeing the opportunity. You're experiencing like, whoa, this is cool. I can do this, and I love all that. That's what's going to get you started. Here's my concern. You have a a business partner, okay? And my assumption could be wrong, but my assumption is that there's a good chance that you guys haven't outlined a a partnership agreement yet of what finances look like and what roles look like. Have you done that? Um, We've, yes, we have actually. You you want to hear about it? Yes. Okay, so so how how it's set up is we are going to go come probably the beginning to mid July, we're going on payroll. All okay. right. So the two of us are going to make $30 an hour. Okay. Right. So we're going to go on the books officially. You got to figure. And I do the math from there as far as what we Who's need. the CEO of the company. So we, we haven't decided that we're, we're partnership, you know, so somebody's got to act in the role of a CEO. That's what I'm saying is that like, who's going to be making the executive decisions about where the marketing is going to be spent or how the company is going to grow. You have to have one CEO. And then what I would consider um, another role, and, and it might be silly because it's just a partnership, but yeah. what I would consider another role is, you know, chief production officer. Right. And I know that sounds silly, but it sounds like you might be more of the CEO. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I have thought about, I'm not going to make these decisions on my own financially. Look, look, as we dig deeper into this, um, you'll see that I wanted to end up with this podcast. I wanted to talk mostly about marketing, but I wanted you to see kind of how we have this whole thing set up, which is right. going to answer some of the questions that you're asking. Perfect. As far as technical stuff, like a CEO or not, or who's going to make the absolute final decision. We haven't said, I've been, I've been, I jumped off the roof a week ago <laughs> to do this stuff. So, and we're, and we're, we're slammed. We're working two jobs right now, right. you know, high paying, great jobs. I mean, we have more to come. Um, I, I'm not terribly worried about that stuff. Like I went to him and said, Hey, you know, I want to spend $5,000 a month on marketing nice. for the next four months. I'm committing 20 grand to it. Tanner. Beautiful. So I already got on the phone with base code marketing. I know they don't really take startups, but because of my, the way I have everything set up and the fact that I'm not yeah. expecting immediate gratification or immediate return sure. on that, I want my, I want my foundation built like you built it. I right. want to build it, build it. So in six months, yeah. my phone is ringing a little bit or, you know, not organically, but it's maybe some organically, but mostly because of my Facebook ads, you know, maybe Instagram ads, my, you know, my Google, my, my, he's setting up my whole website. 
But let me so, tell you this, you're big on foundation. You're in, you're an implementer. You're doing great. I mean, everything that you're telling me is exactly how I would operate it. But I'm telling you, I've done this and I've heard many partnership stories. There has to be a clear cut outline off the bat. This should have been done before you quit your job of how profit is going to be split, who's going to be making final decisions. And this and here's my concern, right? You jumped into this guy's company and you're making you're already making the decisions and it's just what i want to make sure is is that both of you are on the same page and have you established that you're taking the lead it sounds like you are you've already established a budget you've already established what plans are the next phase of this is growth plans because you're painting right now he's painting right now what is the hiring plan i can tell you that can i just go back to what you were absolutely just saying real quick? so um i'm not jumping into his company that's the thing um some of the business that we're working on now is his um or came from him we quoted it together okay, cool. um so kind of ours but it, it he is getting jobs i'm sitting in one right now yeah uh, that is his job for wicked painting we are okay. starting a new company it's called Beautiful. new color new color concepts love it Fresh, okay as far as final decision i agree with you we'll make it we'll figure it out how, how we do it i understand the problems that could occur down the road Absolutely. Um, Just want to make sure you're covered. Yeah. And sometimes we move so fast early on that when we go back that. to do it and you want it, that's just a very, very, very delicate, very important thing. And I would make sure that you get a lawyer involved. And I know, again, that's an expense that you might have to afford. Find a business lawyer, have them draw up a shareholder agreement. Okay. Got okay. it. Very important. And what that is, is just outlining worst case scenario, because here's the deal. Let's say this guy decides he doesn't want to do this anymore. He owns half of the company. You need to have a clause in there that says you can buy back your shares or else you'll just be working for him for the rest of your life because he'll have 50% of the company. He doesn't want to work anymore. Yeah, I got it. He's standing right next to me. So you want to say hi? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, partner. I'm protecting. I'm protecting right. you as well. Trust me. Of course. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Nice so, but you. but here's the deal. I I have a business partner, so I can speak in this in this fashion. You guys have to make sure that everything is transparent, and that's and that's just to make sure that you guys can just focus on the business, right? We don't want to have to focus on, you know, anything outside of operations for the next four years. And once you start getting into legalities, that he said, she said stuff. That is this. That's what's going to be a detriment to your business. I want you to be successful. You can grow a multi-million dollar enterprise. Get this stuff on paper first of all the scenarios. Lawyers do this every day. So whenever, some, God forbid, someone passes away, what happens? Who gets the shares? Who does this? This is a, this is a very important aspect of a partnership. Got it. Okay. All right. Let's move to the hiring process. Absolutely. Let's that's get cool. it. All right, man. So I I think I'm good at. Uh, Good on this aspect, man. All I did is hire, develop, and motivate employees for enterprise rent a car. I love it. So, Great experience. So your seven step uh, process is brilliant. I love it. It's all the okay. things I did except for the <laughs> perfect. I like the smile. Um, just the, um, the 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 little thing that the little form that they had to fill out. I think is is worth everything. What yep. what I what I'm looking and I'm going to do it. So what I'm looking for, Tanner, um, is sales ability. Even though I'm hiring, I'm not hiring painters, put it this way. I'm hiring, I'm hiring people, leaders is what I'm hiring. I want sales ability, customer service ability, flexibility, and work ethic. And if you combine those together, usually you get a leader. Okay. Sure. And that that's what I want to build. So when I'm putting out my ad on in, on Indeed, that's what I'm looking for. A leader that happens to paint. If they have all those qualities. And I can take them in my backyard and throw them a football and they can catch it with their hands. I'm probably hiring them. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, so, I look, look at it like this. When you, and, 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 I, and we all want that, right? I mean, that's, that's the goal of any organization. First, we need to understand what are you guys going to specialize in? I, it looks like you guys are, you guys doing commercial work right now? You said, I think you mentioned yeah. the buildings or is this residential? No, we're doing residential right now. The first job we did was a condo. Um, right in Fort Lauderdale, that we're across the street now in Fantastic. a high rise, high rise condo on a beach. Okay, so now we're, we're doing we're doing what you do. Indo second, indoor, second repaint. question indoor is: Do you want to do you want to build a culture of employees, or do you want to build subcontractors and build a culture in oh, that? Hell no, I'm building culture, man, all the way. Okay, all right, cool. So you want employees? Fantastic. So what we need to do is identify 
what would get us profitable and how many jobs we need to do to make profit first. So we know what goal to hit. So you guys can each make your $30 an hour. Right. And then you can also pay your employees and then potentially get some profit on top of that. Right. I got that. I did the math backwards. I got how many, it. how many jobs do you need to do in a week? I need to do, I need 6,000 revenue coming in. Okay. So that's one crew of three to four. Okay. No, that, that's just us. That's you two. For us making $30 an hour. Right. Um, uh, product, you know, uh, material, probably 15 to 20%. Um, and, us, and then the rest would go into the company into towards marketing, 20% to right. marketing for sure. To, right. to, to so are you doing, 5, are you going to be doing the estimates? As soon as I get off the brush, man, as soon as possible, I want right. to hire people as soon as possible. Right. So <laughs> as soon as you get off the brush, now you're paying yourself $30 an hour to do estimates, right? Or well, yeah, once I get off the brush, yes, sir. Estimates yeah. and manage the marketing and, and sales side of the business, right? That's the plan. Okay, so that doesn't factor into job costing. That's overhead expense. Okay, so when we look at job cost, what's uh, your partner's name? I'm sorry, man. What's your name? Tom. Oh, it's Tom. My bad. Nice to meet you, Tom. I'm Tanner. Very nice hey. to meet you. Um, congrats on the on the new journey. You got a motivated partner here. I love this guy. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> if we, if so, we add an employee, Tanner, if we add an employee, say I I I go to, I get off the brush. Yep. If I add an employee at twenty two dollars an hour, we need to bring in eight thousand in revenue. Okay. Week. So so look at it like this. You have Tom. He's going to be the on site project manager. He's going to act in the role of okay. the painter, right? As soon as so the first step, Tom, is for him to get out of the brush. And then your job is your next role in the company. This is best case scenario is, Tom, you become the project manager, multi, uh, managing multiple jobs, right? I'm sure you guys understand that concept pretty well, right? Yeah. Yep. So the quicker you can get to three painters on a job, which I believe is the ideal number for uh, residential painting, the, yep. the better. But here's the deal. You need to get to two crews of three right? That's where you start making money. Right now, I mean, you have overhead expense, especially when you hire a base coat. And I'm sure you've done this math that all of that overhead is going to get eaten up by what one crew can produce. Correct. Right. So your yep. goal should be to make six hires in the next three months. Really what it comes down to is nurturing a second leader, because what Tom can do is he can manage those. He can always manage one crew. You can always, you always, can, you always have a sure bet that you can find uh, uh, you know, uh, Tom to be a manager, but here's the deal. If you keep looking for these, what I call unicorns, and it's very rare, dude, to get a leader, a communicator, a, you know, right now you, it's okay to find just a painter that shows up and, and wants to be a part of a good company that doesn't. Oh, yeah. want I, I, I agree with you, but I look, man, I didn't know anything about renting cars out of college. You kidding me? And they convinced me to freaking rent cars. Sure. And before I know it, I was making a hundred grand. So I don't care if I create a culture and I put my energy and time's right. energy into this, people are painting, but they're yeah. in a culture where look, Tanner, I want to come in as a train, as a trainee. Right. Um, and then maybe a, as an assistant yeah, crew leader, great. assistant crew leader. That and and what's great is Tom's an expert. So, you know, you have a great trainer already. Yeah. I mean, you guys have such a, a great dynamic. And I see this really working. Let me ask you this. So we can cut to it. What are your questions? I want, I don't want to uh, go off on my own tangent. What are some areas that you want some guidance on that you feel as though I can help you with? Okay. The, the really the only, I, the only questions that I really have is regarding marketing. I learned yeah. most from your podcast. I listened to um, sure. Eric. I've listened to, um, you know, obviously base code and, yep. Um, I think base coat's the right one for me, even though the amount of money um, that it costs. So it's going right. to probably cost me, I don't want to throw out numbers, but it's going to cost me most of my budget to do that. I don't, I, I don't enjoy Angie leads. I haven't done them yet, but I hear it and I cringe every time I hear it. All right, let's talk. stop there because as you're saying this, I'm telling the first move you should make is sign up for Angie leads. All right. I know it sucks, but here's the deal. You have drip jobs, so you need to connect them. Everyone talks bad about them, but listen to the people that are winning. And I'm telling you that these are people that are ready to buy. You don't have to go. Through, base coat's great. It's a long-term strategy. And he'll tell you that. A yeah. Pathfinder and any of the Facebook uh, people that I recommend, great. Yeah. But early on, you need reps. Like you're not like as, a, as the leader of the sales uh, department of your business, you need reps on pricing, on closing, on 
timing jobs. Um, and if you don't have those opportunities in front of you, you know, yeah. then you're wa- you're not wasting time, but you're not getting any better. So don't worry about how the leads are getting to you. Worry about the quality of uh, the lead, you know, make sure it's, you know, you, you want to get people that are willing for you to come over to the house and give yeah. them a quote. All right. So I'm going to pay for that. All right. So I, that's fine. I, I kind of on the ride over here to the job, I was like, I know he's going to say that. So <laughs> I just, You're prepared. I, no, I'm prepared. Look, man, it, 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 if I can get in the house, I, I'm the house. You know, right. I know the whole, the whole. So if you know that, like your sales ability and your natural, you know, your natural uh, management style and the way you communicate is going to increase. You're going to have a, if, if you have somebody complaining about Angie leads, right. Can you honestly say, and I know you believe this about yourself, you know, you're a good salesperson. So it's like, if you both had an, an opportunity with Angie leads, you naturally have the confidence to say, I'm going to close that opportunity. So it's really not about the lead or where it comes from. It's just about the salesperson. And paying for it. <laughs> but, but again, you, but you just said, I want to spend 5,000 a month. Yes, but I, but base mark, Facebook marketing is going to eat up a lot of that. So it's nerve wracking. Like I, like I, I really don't care how much money. Like I would, we, I would split it down the middle though and say, okay, well you have a long-term strategy and you have a short-term strategy. The short-term strategy gives you results until the long-term strategy kicks in. Once yes. the long-term strategy kicks in, then you scale down the short-term strategy and then you rely on the long-term strategy and then you allocate those resources elsewhere or you double down. Okay. I, I, I got it. Um, in order to do base code, it does eat up most of it. So I might need to make do, do something else. What I would do, that, this, is right? my, this is my advice and I can only give you advice that I would take What's on my own. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Here's yeah. my advice. You guys need to build your team first. Okay. Base coat, amazing. I use them. I can use them now. Okay. You need leads. You need people that are committed to buying. If you don't have leads in your pipeline and people that have quotes out that you can follow up with and try to convert to sales, you're not going to yeah. have confidence to build your hiring, uh, your team. You're not. There's no confidence there. Right now, you guys have a certain amount of jobs to a certain amount of time and yeah. you're worried about if there's going to be more. Well, how can you possibly confidently hire if you don't have jobs? You're correct. Okay, so base That's code. Scary, yes. scary part about this whole thing, but you know? I would talk to base code about looking at a different plan to see if they can at least get your Google profile set up, optimize your Google page, go get a website through them. That's good yeah. investment. Maybe if you look at your budget and you say, I would say right now, I would spend at minimum twenty five hundred a month on Angie leads to get going. Okay. Do you think base code marketing would do that? Yeah. Well, you just tell me. Just tell me. You, just tell me. You spoke to Tanner. I already did. <laughs> I told I told him he referred me. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So, you know, what I would do is I would just say, hey, listen, you know, and, and this is a three-month strategy because if I were you guys, I would set a target date of May, was that June, July, August 25th to have yeah. two crews up and running. That should be both of your focus. And that is three guys on each crew, Tom being one of them, okay? And Tom, your job is to find that one person through that hiring that you can train and nurture to be a leader of the second crew. And then you'll get to a point where you guys are cranking out. Um, you know, honestly, two crews of three should generate anywhere between 12 and 14,000 a week in yeah. produced revenue. Okay. So yeah. multiply that by four. Now you guys are in a position where you can double down on the marketing. And really I would ride two crews out for the year because you're going to go through a lot of change. Um, and then worst case scenario, Doug, if you have to jump in and maybe help a job, you know how to paint, which I love. You're not just a salesperson in a tie. You're going to go in there and get dirty if you have to. I mean, this is the grit that's required to get this machine up and running, but you need leads now. Okay. No, that makes okay. sense. Cause how many well, estimates do you have scheduled between now and next week on Friday? Uh, one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my point. So you need to call Angie. Yeah today start getting some leads connected to drip jobs and and that and that would be that would be i, I believe my because you got to realize there's a two-week window usually of when you go to an estimate and the customer's picking colors and then there's a two-week turnaround time from that point in time you need to get your hiring ad out and what my goal for you guys would be is to at least get one hire by next friday okay yeah no because we have uh just going over my schedule in my head we have five over the next couple of weeks five what leads. five leads Five leads yeah. from where, yeah. from, from your word of mouth that you generated. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask yeah. you this question, Tom, how long have yeah. you been in business in the area? In business coming up on three years. My second question to you is, was your business phone number that people know and, and know of you, your cell phone, or did you use like a Google voice or something along? 
I use personal cell phone. Okay. So in this new business, have you guys adopted a cloud-based phone system? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, so, okay, cool. So our systems are this real quick. So drip jobs, obviously, uh, base coat marketing is my plan to use. I'll talk to him. QuickBooks online, Gusto payroll, uh, Uma, Uma phone. And we already signed up for company cam. We're using Uma, it. Uma phone or open phone? Uh, is it open phone? Open phone. Yeah. Sorry. Right. If you listen to my podcast, it's open phone. I don't know what Uma phone is. Uh, maybe that's another one. I don't know. Slight accent. Open yeah. phone's good. Okay, cool. Because you, I know you're getting some traffic still from people that have known you, Tom, and your word of mouth. Yeah. These are great. Those are going to be your little uh, kind of like, you know, it's great. Every now and again, they call and they they, they know you from Wicked Painting and this is awesome. Yeah. So, but yeah. but again, um, any let, let me ask you this in terms of lead nurturing. When you were working at Enterprise, Doug, did you have to do any lead nurturing or anything like that? Um. It was more relationship marketing, um, okay. not not based off leads. I, I did work a year as a um, a regional corporate manager, so I would get leads from the branches okay. that uh, of the region, yep. um, for corporations, and I would call them up and set up the appointment, go out and sell them. On so uh, can I give you a sixty second sure. crash course on Angie that is going to help you? Sure. Okay. First thing is I want you to go through Angie as a customer. That's number one. You need to go through and submit your information so you can see what happens. <laughs> so you understand what your customers just did. Because if you okay. don't understand that, then you can't position yourself in a way that what you need to be as the person who reaches out is an extension of what they just did, right? Does that make sense? Like, yeah, other, like the that. way you need to yeah. position it is like, hey, it's Doug, just got your request. I have tomorrow available at one o'clock. Does that work out for you, right? Yeah. Instead of what I hear a lot is, hey, did you request an estimate or did you do this? Cause you just want to make it seem like you kind of work with Angie and you're just finishing out the request. Cause people get kind of confused. Okay. Well, and drip, drip jobs is usually the first to contact them. So I, I've already got that line down. Yep. Path. Beautiful. It's in my repertoire, man. And <laughs> I would just say, I would just say this drip jobs is great, but it won't replace you on the phone. So just for the first, you know, 90 days, you want to make sure you're calling at least two or three times a day, you know, okay. capitalize on those leads. Will do. No, that makes sense because um, so a little background on mine. So the past three years, I've hired two or three people that did not know how to paint. And I've trained them in six months to be, you know, complete painter Beautiful. where spray and all of that. So I have the confidence to bring somebody on who knows basics, yeah. maybe even anything and train them into, you know, a career. And through that last year, I brought in, I think, $90,000 uh, revenue. Nice. By... So and, well, where are those guys now? Um, no longer working for me because okay. I ended up, you know, going back to something else to try something different because I got Would it be worth it to, to ping them and see if they want to be a part of this new, new vision. I mean, just curious. Yeah, no, I can talk to them. One of them actually ended up starting their own paint company. I have no idea how he's doing, but, um, another guy is in between jobs at the moment that I could go and attack. Guys, but you know, it's about being resourceful early on, whatever you yeah. can do to get this team together, the quicker both of, well, obviously it's going to be Doug first, but you know, the quicker we can get you out of production, Tom, ideal scenario in the future. Let's, let's say two years from now, Tom, you're in a truck driving between four to five job sites, QAing and making sure the jobs are looking good. Doug, you're doing 10 to 15 estimates a week, managing, you know, payroll and whatever other business administration tasks need to be done. I mean, at that point you've hit the peak of operating a partnership business until you guys are just hanging out and people are doing those tasks for you, which could be a possibility too. Is that, an ideal scenario for both of you? Of course. Yeah. That's my vision, man. Yeah. yeah I think we're both on the same page. I'm fired up for you. I mean, you guys have a cool dynamic. Do you have any other questions, Doug? Anything else I could hit on? I mean, did I go hard enough on marketing? Do you want me to, you know, expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, no, I got a question. So like my, my old company, right, is based solely on customer relations, right? Like I have one customer that calls me for son. You know, so I've gotten a lot of work through that. So like where, you know what I mean? Like building between like, I guess I'm going to be the face of the job, of course. Right. Um, or something that would maybe both the face. So where, sure. um, I guess what I'm trying to ask is how far do you go into building customer relationships like that versus, yeah. you know, just to get the job done? Yeah. I mean, there's always a balance. And if you have a good enough team and you operate efficiently, you can you can effectively do both. I think for us, we put three to four painters on every job. 
and yeah. we allow enough time to where my guys aren't running around sweating on the last day, you know, ignoring the customer, you know, I mean, they're making us lunch. They're, you know, we're doing what you're doing now just on a, on a profitable pace. And I think because when you put more painters on a job and you know, you know, this game very well, Tom, you have a lot of experience. You would know that three painters is optimum for an interior or an exterior paint job. Any more than that, four is still really good. But what's cool about that is, you know, Tom, you get yourself in a position where you can actually do that thing uh, in a much more effective way, instead of you kind of ignoring the customer because you know you have to roll a wall or you got to spray. Now you're stepping back, letting your team operate effectively and engaging with the customer even more and saying, you know, hey, do you have any neighbors that you think would be interested? And and really just kind of just you're going to actually be able to do that at a at a at a more effective pace than you are now. Um, and you know that's that's the beauty of having a, an operation moving effectively for sure. Yeah. And I think that's the, the foundation of your business. If you look at any of my reviews, most of them will say something about the crew. It's the team. It's it's the crew. It's the team. It's the crew. It's the team. Um, so the quicker, again, just you guys know this, but you know, if anything, I'm just hammering a little harder. Yeah. Hey, Tanner, any other avenues besides Angie that you can think of that, you know, say base sure. code the end, something else? Is there yeah. Something else? Yeah. I mean, the, the reality it's of the situation is. You've heard me say this. If you listen to the pod, it's just diversify, diversify anything. I mean, you're going to have different results with door hangers than I will. I mean, you got to try them. You got to get into the retirement communities. You're in Florida. You need to yeah. see if they have any booklets. Uh, I love those. You got to look and see if there's any local trade shows going on in these retirement communities, right? Sure. Um, yeah. you know, that's The home shows are really good. I mean, you know, you guys got to understand there's, if, if you would put a number on it, Doug, let me, let me challenge you here. How many paint jobs do you think are happening right now within a hundred miles of you uh, on a daily basis? <laughs> uh, too much. Probably a thousand. Too much. Thousands, right? You just yeah. you can't even put a number on it because we know it's a lot. All that we need to figure out is how can we get people to give us an opportunity? And just the reality yeah. is, you heard me say this, is that they don't know who you are yet. So step one is getting a Google presence, which base code is going to help you out with. Step two is getting leads. I built my business off of Angie leads. I was doing jobs in places that I would have not had an opportunity to do jobs in because Angie leads connected me with a customer. And then guess what? I met the neighbor of that customer, which I don't attribute to Angie leads. I can, but ultimately because I got that job from Angie leads, I met the neighbor, right? So that's the mentality behind it. You have to be comfortable with losing money. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, but you got to look at, you know, your, your metrics and drip jobs and say, Hey, are we making money from these Angie leads? And if you are, do it again, do it again, do it again. So yeah. Almost, what is, do you hear any success, success stories from dope marketing? Like I, I was, I was painting this job the other day. So right on the, on a canal in the intercoastal and only you look across the way, there's condos everywhere. Yeah. And yep. I'm like, I, I told Tom about it. I was like, look, dude, man, I know about this, you know, company Go Marketing. They three mile radius send out yep. postcards. Yeah. Have you found that effective? Let me ask you this. Do you feel like there's a negative to having your name in someone's mailbox? <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the mentality when it comes to marketing. It's there's no negatives to having your name be in someone's mailbox or on their dining room table. You know, I I can't give you an assumption of how that's going to work out for you, but there's no drawbacks to it. Right. Yeah. So ultimately you make that decision, go through it, try it, set a target date. This is how you test marketing. You set a date. It's like a stock. You buy the stock and you don't sell it until a certain date until you, but the minute you compromise that you didn't see it all the way through. Right. So you might say, I'll do dope marketing for three months and I'm going to test my results. And then okay. what I would do is if I were you, I would put a separate phone number on the postcard so you can track who's coming in from that marketing flyer. And you can do that with the open phone. See how much you're actually getting. Yeah, yeah. That. That's yes. important. Tracking is the most important because yeah. if you don't know where it's coming from and, you know, it's very hard to see if it's worth reinvesting, right? Yeah, then you're wasting time, yeah. energy, or money in certain areas that aren't giving you- a Well, the unknown money. is just frustrating. It's like, well, I keep paying this. Is it working? Is it working? Like, you know, but what's cool about Angie is that, you know exactly what type of job you're going to get. And if you don't, you can get a credit for it. And you can track it so easily because in Drip Jobs just says, if you sold something, it'll attribute it to Angie. And then you can, you know, you could, you could see how much you spent versus how much you sold and say, wow, that was good. I've had months where I have spent $3,000 and sold 60 grand with Angie Leeds. I mean, this is, this is a, a true story. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I have a couple of questions to ask, but um, they're Florida specific. So can I just send you a quick email on those? They're, you can you ask them now. 
Okay, licensing. Um, right, we're kind of chasing our tail trying to figure that out. I think they just uh, got rid of the licensing requirement in Florida. Okay, that's maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why. I would Google that, but I don't think you need a license. Because we, we have an HOA. I just did, I did a uh, an estimate the other day and went out there, um, and he's like, yeah, we require a license. Do you have one? I was you like, know, sure. when he says license, he might mean, you know, you might go to your sure. local uh, tax collector, and you have to get a certificate that you paid tax to be a business in the area, which is like less than 100 bucks. Okay. That's not, all right, I'll figure that out. you have any other questions? Um, not at the moment. My mind, mind's fucking, oh, excuse me, <laughs> everywhere. Um, all right, I'm going to recap just to give you guys, you know, again, it's a lot of information, but I would say this. Look, you set your target date for three months to have two crews running. And if you guys, let's put it this way. A lot of what you're doing right now is, is, you know, the first stage of this. But if you guys already had this system and you were moving into a new city, Think of it like that. Think of it as if you guys already built your business, you're in, and you're moving into a new city. You guys would have a certain pace about it because you have confidence that you can get to where you were. So just try to adopt that false mentality that you already, your baseline is, is two crews. Your business isn't a business until you hit two crews, and you're going to find those people to build up those crews. Spend the money, do whatever you have to do. The payoff is, is, is astronomical if you can get it right. Okay. Word. So we each Thank have you. our jobs to do. Welcome. Do. Yeah, keep in touch, Doug. I want to hear. Uh, I want to hear the progress. All right, we'll do. Definitely. Is this helpful? Dude, very helpful, Dude. man. It's good to speak to you too because you I do as well. The drip Thank you for all thing. the support. Yeah, man. Of course. Yeah. 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 Thank you, bro. I, you know, painting every day. I have the headset in, listening to your Thank podcast. You, yeah. Right yeah. down. But tell me. So make sure you connect Angie Leads to Drip Jobs. That's going to be a yeah. game changer. It's in the settings. We teach you how to do it. Um, you know. But I think you'll 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 like the ROI on it. Are you doing cabinets, Tom? Um, I have, yeah. So is that um, something you're open to 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 continue to do? Yes, yeah, so my old painting boss. I'm originally from Connecticut, and uh, he's clean cut painting, and he solely okay. switched to just cabinets. Okay. And he's got a great business so far. Is his name and, Chris? Yeah, Chris Soul. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, he's a great guy. Absolutely. Yeah, he is. That's guy. so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so so um. I kept telling because Tom's such a good sprayer, he's a good painter, you know. Um, and I've watched him spray doors and cabinets before. So yeah. I, my goal was to build the repainting, and then and then Tom and I break off and uh, build the cabinet division. I listened to Nick Slavic's podcast like fifty times. So, dude, I definitely want to do that. Cabinets. But right now I want to do one at a time. But listen, here's the deal, okay? You again, let me just make it clear here. Cabinets opens up an entire world of successful marketing. Facebook marketing for cabinets is like, I don't know, it's like a dream, dude. If you do cabinets, you will get a lot of leads on Facebook. Now, I'm not going to say the quality of those leads are great. You're going to get a lot of tire kickers, people that just want to know pricing. But what's great about it is that is a honey hole. So if you guys are interested in cabinets and you get someone that does your Facebook ads, if you decide to go with Eric with Pathfinder, just, you know, you'll get leads, more leads than you can handle uh, if you guys decide to go in on cabinets and there's less competition, right? So you're not competing with the, the homeowner in most cases who says they can paint it themselves, right? You ain't painting your cabinets. Yeah. So you have a lot of, I mean, if you guys are running into roadblocks with the house painting, don't be afraid to switch gears into cabinets yeah, yeah. for you guys. Okay. That's good. Advice. That's what, what, if, what about um with with Eric and and with base code? I don't they like I know Eric specializes in Facebook, but base code provides Facebook marketing. So they do. I would both, right? You you know I have friends that do both, and there you yeah. have benefits equal way because there's accountability help. I I think base code's obviously a Google specialist. They can put they can add on Facebook, but I'm sure they'll tell you that like you know I mean it's it's more of an add on. Eric just does Facebook ads. So, you know, and what I love about Eric too, is that they have a really good coaching community that you can be, be a part of what yeah. I would do if I, what I, and that coaching community is great. Does it twice a week, highly motivating. And he's a very good friend of mine. So I would just say this, if I were you take your time, interview each of them, right? See what the benefits of both are and, and make your decision. You know, I think um, anyone that you've heard on my podcast or see me recommend, they're going to do a good job. It's just a matter of what your budget is and, and who you jive with the most that can give you results. I would say that if you're going to go on Facebook, do it with cabinets. Interior and exterior painting is not as effective. The, the before and afters aren't as, as dramatic. In person they are, but when you put them on Facebook, it just, 
it doesn't get people to stop scrolling. But when they see oak cabinets first, beautiful white cabinets, then it's like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Let me see what that would be. I would like to get that done. Right. Yeah, I can show you some. Hey, last, so, last, last, yeah. And last thing. So we got this job. We, we're working two right now. So they're kind of across the street. So we got to go back tomorrow and finish them up. Right. So the guy has caught this. He was on Wicked Tuna at one point and he caught this giant tuna fish. Now the foyer is huge. Right. You know, like 30 feet high. So we had a pain and everything. The place is looking good. We're finishing up. And the last thing we're doing tomorrow when we go there is hanging the tuna from the foyer ceiling. <laughs> oh, have fun <laughs> so with that. I'm, I'm going to video the whole thing. And At least you didn't paint yeah. around it. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the customers are so excited about it. And the reaction, oh, man. You're hanging the tuna. The new paint job and hanging the tuna. You know? Oh, I love it. So, yeah. I, yeah, that's that's a good Instagram post right there. For sure. <laughs> That, yeah. That'll be a company slogan after a job's done. Hey, did you hang the tuna? <laughs> you need to hang your shark or tuna? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, so, you guys yeah. take care of yourself. If you ever want to come back on this and, and you want to talk shop, let me know, guys. Good luck to you. Got it, Tanner. Thanks a right. lot, man. Take care. Right, yep. See you later. Bye. What's up, guys? Thanks so much for listening to that awesome business breakthrough. I hope you got a lot out of it. So next up is a pro spotlight. Uh, we have Mark Bradford. He is a pro drip jobs user crushing it. Now, what's cool about Mark is that he was one of the people that was like literally on the fence. I couldn't get him to budge. I think he signed up one time and then didn't really use it, canceled, and then came back and then he used it and he loves it now. So this was awesome to get him on uh, to share what drip jobs are doing for him. And uh, hopefully if you're on the fence, maybe you can see what drip jobs can do for you. What's up everyone. I'm here with Justina and Jordan of the busy bees. They've been so gracious to share a few minutes of their day to tell you guys how awesome drip jobs is um, <laughs> for their business. Um, and I just kind of want to start off with you know, what were some of the things when we first started out that you were a little bit concerned about with adopting a new software? Because that's a big hurdle yeah, for a lot I of mean, companies. Yeah, I mean, for me, I for a long time, for many years, it was just me and one other person, you know, but I wanted right. to scale business and grow it. And I knew I needed something um, that was more complex where we could keep everything yeah. in certain areas, you know, like just uh, communication wise. Um, so as a problem solver, I started thinking, you know, looking out there, different programs. And I had tried a couple and it didn't work. And then I had followed you with, you know, certain things that you've done over the years. Um, yeah. And then somehow I ran across drip jobs and then I realized it was you. And I was like, what are the odds of that? So, That's so funny. it was specifically tailored to a painting business, which obviously yeah. is what we yeah. are. And the other programs didn't specifically tailor to what I needed. Um, yeah. So that was ultimately, it was like, a done deal and i how's it up. working for you i mean <laughs> you know how's it working for you i mean a lot of people are skeptical about automation you know when it yeah, comes to automation no, I do, do you feel like I it's love, saving you guys a lot of time it is for sure um the automation helps definitely i like that we can tailor it you know specifically to what we need to say if we need to edit things we're allowed you know to do that to go yeah. in there to make it easier um because some you know some businesses are different and with yeah. that accommodation we can just tailor it to our customers and you know it's working the biggest thing i feel like that's helped us is that appointment booking link so as a business yes. owner again like trying to problem solve trying, <laughs> Everyone to save, loves that. trying to save money you know time um we've just been making sure to send that booking link out every time we contact yeah. the customer even if it's customers on, even, adopting even it's, well to that oh yeah yeah yes. they love it because a lot of people this day and age don't have time to call maybe don't want to call um right. and it might you know, I think that it's helping us get more jobs. Um, yeah. And ultimately, it just shows the customer that we mean business. They're like, you know, here's the right. calendar. And it, I like the fact, though, for that, the booking link on Drip Jobs, because they get to tell us what exactly. their availability right. is. So there's, you know, and we yeah. can plug that in based on our schedule, whereas other um, calendar booking apps, like they just, I didn't feel like it worked as well for my Personal yeah. business and it's funny people so. never know when they can do an estimate when they call you they have to be like all right yep. well, hold on let me look at my calendar exactly. it's like did you not yes. expect me to ask you yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so it's funny that you know you send them the link um jordan yeah, let me ask you i mean <laughs> how's it been for you kind of just being able for justine to pass the ball to you having the software as your central spot to jump in you guys are huge on notes right so you're the reason yes. you put the notes you know, Justina, wait, first, let me put these two <laughs> are like my sidekicks because they're like <laughs> my eyes. And every day or every other day, I get a message yeah. like, change this, tweak this. Exactly. And I love it. You know, I don't like, think it's personal. I really do. And then I'm like, yeah. hey, I'm like, hey, surprise. 
exactly. Like, hey, surprise, thing, we put you know? this here for you guys. You know, yeah. tell me yeah. what you think. So, so you're the reason we put the notes uh, section in the deal command yeah. center where you guys can <laughs> see that. Yeah. yeah. And helpful. so, what do you guys so think helpful. about that? Is that instead of like that other it's step, so you guys like that? Streamlined. Yeah. Because like yeah. we can instead of having to click to the notes section to read the notes, right. it's right there. It's like yeah. okay, scroll, it's scroll, awesome. scroll. Right there. Right. And we go to what we need to go to next. We can also yeah. right correct me if I'm wrong, we can copy and paste emails or any other yes, thing. very true. And the attachments if there's text soon we'll integrate your emails. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I no, it's that. been a godsend. Like, you know, I'm on the field a lot. I'm a go go girl. So Jordan and Kimberly as well, obviously. Um I throw things to them. So if I run across something in drip, I'm like, that's not right. I'm like, send it over to Tan, you know, but like Jordan and I Kimberly, try to figure it out before. Yeah. I, I'm like, well, we got to do this. I'm like, but we shouldn't have to go through like a thousand steps. I'm yeah. like, let yeah. me, let me message Tanner and, and his team, see what they say. It's if there's an yeah. easier way yeah. to do it that we're just not catching on to that. You know, our mission so, statement, we want to be an extension of your business. And I think like, that's our focus. You know, we're not perfect, but right, you know, what business is, you know? We can yeah. tell you're really trying though. And I appreciate, you know, the intercom yeah. because you guys, even on off hours are getting back to us and you don't have to do that, you know, right. and we yeah. just want, ultimately we're problem solvers. That's at the end of the day, there's going to be things that come up that we have zero control yeah. over. There's going to be glitches. Yeah. Um, just like our business, there's going to be bumps in the road, you know, programming wise, there's probably more, <laughs> um, yeah. but we're oh, being able to work bumps, with us, you bumps. know, it's been awesome. <laughs> and I, you bumps know, I just love to, yeah, I love to see how things are progressing, you know, with the program yeah. itself and we're utilizing everything that we can. So um, you like the new you know? proposal look, Justina, did you see yeah, that? Yeah, I do. Yep. Very yeah. cool. Did you yeah, see that your like, review oh, link? New went, <laughs> oh, new button! You got a new button. Yeah. You got uh, uh, you yo. got your review links populating in there. Yeah. Now, do you guys sell the jobs on the spot, or do you like to email the quote when when? Um, you know? if I can sell it on the spot, I do. Like yesterday, I had somebody yeah, I went in there sign, and they, okay. they gave me something. Okay. So like, nice. Did you? Yeah. So like, you did you have them it. sign on like the iPad? Like, yep. how did that work? Did they sign? They, the, they signed on the like, iPad. <laughs> they were nice. blown away by all the technology. Like, like, don't worry. I I normally sign it a lot neater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, it's okay. So Mine looks yeah. the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's been That's great. Cool. I'm really excited yeah. for the future. Um, I think given you know where I was in my business, it was a good step to take on at that time because it was our downtime. Yeah. You know, winter you're a little so slower. Yeah. So we learned a lot of it while we had the time, and I'm grateful yeah. for that. And now you're just full speed. You know, yeah, you exactly. Really, um, yeah. And there's hundreds of customers, so we need drips to help yes. us. Yeah. How many? So how many? So how many customers do you guys think you'll serve this year? Ooh. I don't know. The projection based on numbers is, you know, it's going to be great. I mean, I'm really excited. It took 20 years to get to this point, but it's all Amazing. about teamwork, problem solving, yeah. and just making sure you, you know, you try to have a good attitude while you're doing that. I yeah. love that. Have I love team. that. So, yeah, I can't team, thank you guys team. enough. Keep it coming, the teamwork, the camaraderie. Yes, you know, you guys are awesome. Hopefully, next uh, well, time we touch again. base, we can give you some more tips. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I know. They're coming. They're coming. <laughs> and, uh, oh, by the way, we're fixing that word in there, that originally thing. That thing is stuck out yes. to me. Was that you guys with the hand signed signature? So little things like that, you know, matter. Yeah. You know, I can't. Yeah. I study this software so much. It's almost like when you guys paint a house, right? And yeah. I paint too. So I know both right. sides. But, but, but when you guys paint a house, you're in that house all day. And then the customer will be like, hey, you I forgot know, something. So like, true. How did I not see that? Yeah, so you great. Know? Yeah. I totally get that so. because I'm a family painter too. So, <laughs> so it makes total sense. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, all right, we're packing up. But what about that? Okay. Like, how did I walk by that, you know, eight times yeah. and not see it? Yeah. You know, keep Once it coming. Once you stare at something you for too long, long, you don't always see it. So you take a step back and you come back and you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, wow. I'm like, oh, it's funny. And that's been there for a while. So it's good. So thank you guys, of course. You're you know, welcome. I, I Thanks, Tanner. Get back to doing what you guys rock at. We'll see you soon. And uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do this again sometime. That sounds good. Yeah. Take We're care. Up for it. <laughs> Bye, Tanner. Right. Thank you.